Hey everyone, we're back here with Princeton Tonight. I'm Marcelo Luke, sitting down here with our special guest this month, Olympian Robbie Andrews. Robbie, thanks so much for being here tonight. Thank you for having me. Of course. Now, Robbie, you are a man in pure physical shape. You are <laughs> so fit, it is incredible. Beyond there, it is what, I don't know, Michelangelo <laughs> made when he constructed the statue of David. Um, what do you do to, to train so, to, 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 to train? What, what's your process like? Uh, obviously, lots of running. Yeah. Um, you know that's a given uh you know we I, i'm a so i'm a volunteer assistant with the princeton team here mm -hmm. and uh you know we do we do lots of stuff we do lots of lots of running we do lots of med ball stuff we do lots of stretching um no yoga no uh, yoga as much as i love yoga pants yeah. no yoga really but um we do a lot of hurdle mobility so you know hip hip flexibility um but i'd say for the most part running so if i want to be as good in shape as, as you are those are the steps Avoid yoga, you're saying. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll, I'll try, I'll yes, try. Yes. So let's talk about a little bit about your, your athletic tra um, trajectory. So you started running when you were in middle school, I imagine. Um, and then at, at, in high school, you realized that you had an incredible talent. <laughs> you, you set two records while you were in high school, if, if, I'm, if I'm correct. Correct, yeah. For, for 800 meters and what, is it 1,000 as well? The, the 1,000 indoors, wow. yeah. Wow, so what was that like to, to, to set those records while you were so young? They honestly, they were they were relatively unexpected. Yeah. Um, so as a as a junior in high school, um, yeah, I was I was good, you know, but I was by no means like the best in the in the mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I remember getting recruiting calls from coaches, yeah. and they were and uh, they said, well, "What are your goals this year?" And I said, "Well, I want to set I want to set a thousand meter record indoors." Wow. And one of them like laughed at me. Yeah. He said, "Wow, I, well, you're not going to do yeah. that." And needless to say, I didn't go to that school. Yeah, but, you showed um, him, yeah. didn't you? <laughs> and uh, you know, I worked with my dad, and and we, um, and we, you know, we set this big goal, and we achieved it. And it's it's that's honestly one of the most satisfying satisfying feelings, in in anything, but especially in track and field. Wow, wow, th that's incredible. And then moving on from from high school, you ended up going to University of Virginia. Correct. Yes. And so, did you when you went to UVA? Were you I guess cognizant of the fact that that, that you were going to try to to keep running. I mean, you you went for running, but but was that was that something that you thought, oh well, I'm going to spend my, my time here running, and then we'll see how things work out. I was I was very much a runner first and a student second. <laughs> Interesting. All right, all right. I was very much an athlete student. Yeah. yeah. Um, UVA is a, a wonderful school, uh, and it was it was very challenging for me, mm -hmm. um, and I. Uh, you know, my, my grades got better as I got older. Good. Which is, you want that. Which yeah, is yeah, how, yeah. When it, my, I say when you, start, when you start pretty low, it's easy to get better. Yeah. But uh, it took me a while to figure, to figure the school out, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and the best study, studying tactics for me. Yeah. But, um, you know, I cared a lot about school. You know, I, I want to be a, a teacher when I'm, when I'm in a couple years. Yeah. Um, so, wow. you know, I, I, care, I care a lot about school. And, I, um, you know, it was very challenging for me. But, I, you know, I appreciate that. Yeah, that, that's wonderful. And then while you were... At school, you you managed to set, well, you, you managed to, to win a, two championships <laughs> for, for, for NCAA yes. indoor and outdoor, Correct. 800 meters. Mm -hmm. I had the chance to watch one of those videos, and the sheer look of shock on your face when you won one of those <laughs> events was was heartwarming. Just to realize that you you, I guess, had just trained so well that by the time you got there, you were not even maybe aware of, of what an incredible runner. You are. Um, tell us a little bit about that that championship, and and again, like being validated once more for all that all that work that you put in. So that was um, that was the indoor national championship in mm -hmm. 2010, my freshman year of college. Wow. Um, yeah, it's a long time ago yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Seven years ago. Yeah. Um, but you know, if you if you watch the race, yeah, I'm just this young kid who's wide eyed and you know ready to tackle the world. Um, and I was I raced. Uh, Andrew Weeding, who got second, he mm -hmm. he was he was my idol growing up in high really? school. You know, he so he he made the Olympic team in two thousand eight, yeah. and I was I was in the stands watching him qualify for the Olympics that year. Wow! And it was so to be able to to be on the same track as him, that let alone, must have been wow. It, incredible. Let alone racing him, incredible. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, there's you know you want to be you're confident in yourself, of course. Yeah. But there's difference between being confident and and achieving what you achieve. Yeah. Um, and I was, you know. I don't know if I ever truly expected to win that race, mm -hmm. but that was kind of the the catalyst for for the rest of my career. Really? You know? yeah. so, so at that moment, you realized, well, this is it's something like, that I want to do professionally. Absolutely. Wow. 
And yeah. so you ended up doing that, just that. About <laughs> a, a, a year later, after you you decided that it was the time to go pro, or to almost two years to yeah. the month. Um, wow! In uh, March March first of two thousand twelve is when I went pro. Wow! Yeah. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that that decision. So uh, obviously catalyzed by that win, but so what was going through your head as you were deciding, oh, well, this is something that I want to do for the rest of, as, as much time as I can. <laughs> for the rest of my life, yeah. yes. <laughs> oh, that would be, that would be nice. Um, so two, 2012 was uh, an Olympic year, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, and uh, the, the coach, uh, Jason Vigilante, who's now the coach mm -hmm. at Princeton, he was at, at UVA at the time, or he was in Charlottesville at the time. And I, um, you know, I really wanted to make an Olympic team. I really yeah. wanted to be an Olympian. That was my dream yeah. for a very long time. And I felt like I had a great opportunity to pursue a professional career. Um, I had won two titles already. It's when your stock's so high, you know, yeah. it could, how much higher could it have gotten for mm -hmm. me? Yeah. And uh, I felt like it was, it was the most practical thing to do right. uh, with the time being in the situation I was in. Mm -hmm. And uh, I signed with uh, Ray Flynn and Flynn Sports, Flynn Sports Management, mm -hmm. and um, Adidas. I signed with Adidas, and they've been uh, absolutely incredible to me yeah. ever since. And uh, unfortunately, I did not make the Olympic team that yeah. year. But um, fast forward a couple of years, yeah. and uh, dream, dreams do come true. Yeah. So, so was that time between the London Olympics and the Rio Olympics really spent for you just training as hard as you could to make sure that you were able to make that 2016 team? It was. It was more of a of a, a mental training, a mental wow. journey, mm -hmm. you know, than than physical. Um, I uh, I still haven't run faster than I did in 2012, mm -hmm. which is which is kind of funny to think mm -hmm. about, considering how much y not yoga right. we've done. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I I kind of needed to get my mind right. It was yeah. it was very uh, taxing on me to, yeah. to not to set this big goal. Like in high school, you know, I set this big goal and I achieve it. Mm -hmm. Then in college, I set a big goal to win a title. I I achieve yeah. it. Post college, yeah, you know, I set this goal to make an Olympic team, and I don't. Yeah, and it was it was it was kind of traumatic, you know, mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. And it took me it took me a few years to get back to to the Robbie that that I yeah. was. And yeah. um, it just took time. That was right. the only only thing that could that could help that process. Mm -hmm. And you did. I mean, you you, well, <laughs> you made the Olympic team. <laughs> well, they, it was it was not an easy journey. Right. But um, that was a the four years went by slowly and quickly at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So, but so then, by the time that you had made it to Rio, you know, what was going through your mind, and then what was that experience like, being in Brazil with the U.S. Olympic team, <laughs> wearing that Ralph Lauren sweater, you know, <laughs> walking into that incredible stadium and realizing, oh wow, this is I, I am I'm an Olympian now. I, I'm an Olympic athlete. The my time at UVA helped me fit in with the Ralph Lauren stuff. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> All right. A um, lot of vineyard vines yeah, too. Yeah. And uh, it was it was. Truly special, yeah. you, know, there, there, you know, there's only so many, you know, it was so special. Mm -hmm. um, representing your country, that's, that's the biggest honor mm -hmm. that, that a person can have, in my opinion, and, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it the best way I, I can. Yeah. Um, but my, my family was able to come down, and, yeah. and uh, it, was, it was just, you know, it was my dream. Yeah. And I was, I was literally living my dream. Yeah. Um, so I'm very grateful for, for my time there. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I want to go back. I'm right. Hung I'm hungry for more. Right. That, that's good to hear. What was it like spending time with all these other athletes from, from around the world, those who are the best in, <laughs> at what they do? It was, it was very enlightening yeah. to, to meet so many people and so many talented and accomplished mm -hmm. people. Because you walk around and any given person you look at could be a world champion. Right. Could be the next water polo star. Could, right. You know, it, it's, mm -hmm. it was very, I learned a lot from a mm -hmm. lot of people. Yeah, and it was uh, something that I'll never forget. My my conversations and my experiences. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, ultimately, your time in Rio did not go as planned. But you are still preparing for the next Olympics. I, I suppose. Okay. Yes. And so, is there when you're not training, when you're not not doing yoga, <laughs> what else do you do? What's what's a day in the life of a <laughs> of a of a professional runner? Uh, I watch a lot of Office. Okay, uh, that's probably right. my favorite show. Yeah, and. Uh, just a lot of resting and relaxing for um, the next training session. It's uh, not a glamorous life, I say. Oh, not glamorous. I don't know. <laughs> you, you, you've got the Adidas sponsorship. You get to sit at home and watch The Office. It seems like it would be a, a fun place to be. Well, thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, Robbie, you. it is such a pleasure to have you here on this show. Um, and I'm really glad you got to be here, Robbie, because it's funny. Um, we'd actually intended to interview you in a totally different setting. Um, 
So we wanted to interview in your natural habitat, um, um, actually on a run. Wait, really? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but um, unfortunately that really didn't go as planned. Um, but uh, we'll let you guys check that out. You guys ready? All right, hey everyone, Marcella Luke's here about to interview Olympian mile runner Robbie Andrews. I heard it's pretty fast, so we're gonna try to catch him on a run, see if we can catch up with him. But I've been training, so I think we'll be good. Here he goes now. And so we were off to catch Robbie Andrews. Look at us go. All right, so obviously it was stupid of us to think that we could catch up with him on foot. Kind of goes without saying, he's, a, he's an Olympian, but I got this scooter now, so we'll be totally fine. Oh, there he's now. Little did we know we would be unable to keep up with one of the nation's fastest distance runners. Uh-oh. All right, so obviously we've been thinking about this completely wrong. We can't catch up to him. He's a very fast runner, so we're going to have to stop him. All right. But what could cause him to stop on the road, you ask? Young man, young man, would you help me cross the street? Of course. Oh, please. Oh, oh too kind. Let's go, young man. Oh, let me know. Oh, come on, Well, uh, we're glad we at least got you in the studio. Uh, it seems like I need to do a lot more working out. Maybe <laughs> even try out some yoga. But thank you so much for coming, Robbie. It's really been a pleasure. Thanks for being on Princeton tonight. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it. Of course. Up next on Princeton tonight is our first musical guest of tonight's episode. He's an award-winning singer who joined us to record a medley of Broadway hits. And he's a very good friend of mine. We're proud to present Sam Gravitt. 